We go down through a layer of silt and then hit a layer of clay. As soon as we fill that layer of silt up to capacity, to field capacity, we hit that clay layer, it's going to start slowing down and our intake rate's going to go, actually we'll end up saturating that silt and then we'll start taking on the intake rate of the clay that's below it once we've saturated the silt. So whenever we have a profile change, we're, we could end up with a slowing down of the intake rate. For example here, say we filled, we had a layer of silt and then we hit clay and after five hours we totally filled the silt, our intake rate would just drop right down. Right there it would just go and on out that way. So for five hours we'd have a quarter of an inch an hour. As soon as we filled that layer up, put an inch and a half of water into that silt layer, we filled it up, now we hit the clay rate. And boy, just about that quick is how it happens too. Once it fills, it's done. Water table. If we have a perched or high water table in the field, Maybe we have a field out here along the stream and we only got two foot of depth. Well, once we fill the two feet, the profile full, we've hit the water table below it. There's no place else for the extra water to go. You filled the whole profile now, maxed it out. And there are places where we will irrigate with water that close to the surface, especially on turf. around. Uh, you go out on all these golf courses where they have ponds and so on in areas where they don't even need to line the pond, especially when you get in areas where there's a lot of surface water. Uh, you go to western Washington, western Oregon, up around Spokane, you'll find areas with lots of surface lakes and so on. You can have groundwater very, very close to the surface. So it doesn't take much to get down to where you've maxed her out. Other things that will get you that way too are the, the hard pan. And around this valley we have some areas that have hard pan. You might go down two feet and hit a layer of old, what used to be an old seabed. And it's just like cement. And water will not go down through it. So you got to, if that's three feet deep, you got a three foot soil to work with. Because once you get below three feet, it ain't going anywhere. If it hits that hard pan, it will not penetrate that hard pan, so it acts just like a layer of rock and the water just starts backing up. And pretty soon you fill that profile up and once it's full, there's no place for the water to go but down the surface somewhere. Puddle or run off, depending on the slope. Air entrapment can be a problem. If we put the water on at super high rates, we can actually trap air underneath the water that's coming in. So if we're like in flood irrigating, you can see this happening. If you ever go out and watch water go down a furrow and you'll, as the furrow fills, you'll see bubbles coming up through the water as it's going down the furrow. But put the water on so fast it traps air down below it and the air can't get out until it loses, there's, there has to be enough hydraulic gradient in there for it to finally bubble out. So air entrapment can cause a slowdown in intake rates, generally for short periods of time. There air will finally work its way out and allow the water to finally enter. But it will cause you some short-term problems. The initial moisture content of the soil. So if we have it, and we, we already have it pretty wet, we may be starting at a position over here. If, we, if it's already really wet on the surface, we just shift the axes as partially wet soil. So all of a sudden, we're really watering in this environment instead of this environment over here where we have a dry surface. So if we have already quite a bit of moisture, this, this, continu excuse me, this continuum is going to shift to the right and we start to lose some of that instantaneous intake rate capability. 
So the wetter it already is, the less instantaneous intake rate we have. 